Hello, hello. So today we're going to be taking a look at the FMS or flight management system in an aircraft and find out why it's such an important piece of equipment in modern airliners. So you'll most likely hear the flight management system be referred to as the FMS or FMC and as the name implies, it's a computer system which helps pilots manage a flight from start to finish. The main benefit of this is that it reduces the workload for pilots allowing them to concentrate on controlling the plane. Now in the past, large commercial aircraft would often have additional crew members. They would normally have a flight engineer whose responsibility was to manage the engine performance and fuel systems. If you have a look at pictures of older aircraft, you'll often see a third seat in the cockpit and a set of panels called the engineer's station. Early planes also had a dedicated navigator whose responsibility was to plan the route, constantly check the aircraft's current position and ensure that pilots were flying the route correctly. As technology progressed through the years, computer systems were developed to automate the role of an engineer and a navigator to reduce their workload. Nowadays the systems are so advanced that they can perform these job roles without the need for the extra dedicated crew members. The FMS in modern aircraft is a critical component because it connects to so many other important systems. Its main function is to guide the plane along its intended flight path, or its route through the sky. To do this, the FMS must be kept up to date with something called AIRAC data. AIRAC data ensures that any person or any system used to navigate planes, they work by using the exact same version of aviation data, so that would include people and systems such as aircraft and pilots, air traffic control, air traffic flow managers, flight planners and dispatchers, and even aeronautical charts which describe things like runway information. AIRAC data includes information on all sorts of navigation items such as airport data, runway data, ILS procedures, departure and arrival procedures, airways, waypoints, VOR stations, all sorts of information and this needs to be updated every 28 days. So you can see why it's important that a flight management system is kept up to date. Another key part of the FMS is that it constantly checks the aircraft's current position which allows it to guide the plane accurately along the planned flight path. It does this by checking the aircraft's position from three possible sources. It can determine the current position using a GPS receiver if one av is available. It can cross-check multiple VOR or NDB stations to find the current position, or it can use an onboard inertial reference system, which is usually a gyroscope or an accelerometer system. Now, if all three of these are built into the plane, then the FMS will use all three systems together to determine the aircraft's position. More advanced flight management systems can also interface with an engine management system, which allows the FMS to determine the most efficient engine performance and fuel usage based on the route, weather conditions, weight of the plane, amongst other things. The FMS can determine such things as the optimal rate of climb after takeoff and the best economical cruise speed. The benefit of this is that airlines can save money by using less fuel and by spending less money on maintenance costs because the engines are being used more efficiently so there's less wear and tear on them. So let's take a look now at how an FMS is used. So what you can see on screen just now are two different CDUs which stand for Control Display Unit. This is the device which allows a pilot to interact with the FMS. On the left you have a CDU from an Airbus A320 and on the right is one from a Boeing 737 Next Generation. You'll notice that they look fairly similar so let's take a look at some of the common elements of a CDU. For this, I'm going to be using the Airbus version because I'm much more familiar with that one. So we'll start at the bottom and work our way up. Now normally, the lower half of a CDU is dominated by a keypad and a number pad. This allows pilots to enter data into the CDU, which I'll demonstrate shortly. You also have another set of buttons which take you to different pages or screens within the FMS. And then above that you have the display, which, surprise surprise, displays information to pilots. Now the display has a couple of features to be aware of. First, at the very bottom, you have a blank section called the scratch pad. 
When the pilot types in information, it is shown in the scratch pad so that the pilot can make sure that they're typing in data correctly. The CDU may also display messages here if something requires the pilot's attention. Again, that's something I'll show in a moment. Now the rest of the display is actually broken into sort of different lines, each one having a left and right side. Each line has a button on the side of the display, and these buttons are called soft keys. Sometimes there will be an option on the display that a pilot can select, so they would tap the soft key next to that option to select it. A pilot can also use a soft key to copy data from some lines in certain circumstances, or paste data into a line. Let me show you. On the screen just now, you can see an initial setup page for an Airbus CDU. On this page, a pilot would be expected to enter in some information about their flight. Now, if we have a look on the left-hand side, you can see here that we have a line which says flight number, but then it's blank underneath. So what a pilot needs to do is type in the flight number using the keypad. So as I type in flight 123, you can see that the flight number goes into the scratch pad so the pilot can double check and make sure that they've got the data correct. And then you can click on the soft key for that line and voila, the data gets entered into that line and the scratch pad is now clear. Now, CDUs are clever little devices, so if a pilot makes a mistake, the CDU will usually highlight it. For example, another piece of information we can enter on this page is our starting airport and our destination airports up here in the top right corner. Now the CDU is looking for the four letter code for our current airport and our destination. However, if I type in something silly like here to there and then try to enter that, you can see that I get a message in the scratch pad telling me that I've made a mistake. So if I now type in something properly, for example, Inverness to London Luton, so EGPE forward slash EGGW, then you can see that that goes in fine. The CDU also starts entering in some information automatically, such as the latitude and longitude of the plane's current position, which it obtained from our current airport. And there you have an example of that AIRAC data coming in handy and reducing the pilot's workload. And that about covers the basics of flight management systems. Now, I will be doing detailed tutorials about these in future videos when I start doing some aircraft specific videos. But for this one, I just wanted to cover the absolute fundamentals so that people have a solid understanding of what this device is and what it does. So looking ahead, I'm afraid there's not going to be any more videos for the rest of this year. However, I am going to spend some time over Christmas just refreshing the channel a little bit and getting things ready for 2017. So I'm going to take the opportunity now to say thank you to all of you for your support this year. And of course, welcome to everyone who joined the channel this year. Um, it's been a great year for me. Uh, the channel's grown a lot, a lot more than I expected. So um, I can only thank everyone for everyone watching for that. So thank you all sincerely. Uh, but for now, I'm going to say Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Thank you all very much for watching. Take care out there, and I will be back on Saturday the 7th of January 2017. Bye-bye.